CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 Weekender. We're at this drifting track in Thane and our guest today is an avid racer, in fact the only Indian to have won the European Ferrari Challenge. Uh, he is equally known for his love of fast cars and racing as he is for being the chairman and managing director of the Raymond Group. The man behind this 90-year-old conglomerate, Gautam Sanghania, is our guest on this edition of The Weekender. Hello and welcome to The Weekender. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Come, let me show you the first one. So, Mr. Sinhania, this is your very first racing car. When did you get this? Tell us a little about it. This is actually my first uh, track racing car. Uh, this was bought, I think, in 1990 when uh, the Shri Paramedha race track came up and they had a uh, single seater racing there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tell us a little more about your racing passion. Of course, uh, there are many, very many things you're interested in. When did you first pick up racing? When was the first time you professionally uh, participated in a racing competition? Well, I started racing cars, or at least got interested in cars in uh, since I was four years old. So Four years old? Uh, were you I driving a car when you were four years old? I was driving carts at those, that age, when you know, 40-year-old primitive carts. Are you talking about the little plastic kit cars? Or no, no, they were with yeah. engines, they were go-karts. Uh, wow. So I started with that, they didn't have too much power, so you used to throw water so you could slide. So I learned a lot of car control with that, and then slowly, when I got my license at 18, Okay. When I got my license at 18, I started uh, with rallying, mm. which was the first thing I did with the Premier Padmanis, mm. and then took it forward. I was more interested in uh, track racing, mm. so we started with Sri Parambadur, which was the first purpose-built race circuit that was built in India. Yes. And this car was the FISMI, what they call the Formula Maruti, with 800cc engine, and it was the state-of-the-art car that India had at that time. but In the 1990s, we're yeah, talking, yes. Early 90s, well, 1990, exactly. And and really, I mean, I don't... Today, I, I shudder to think how we drove it, leave alone raced it. Does it still function, though? Yeah, it's, it's working condition. It's fully functional. You can drive it around. So, uh, you know, t what is your favorite car now? I mean, that is, of course, the one you started out with. What are the other cars you're really well, into now? I don't have a favorite car because you can see there are lots of cars parked here, but they're all different. Uh, I mean... Whilst they all look like drift or drag or track cars, they're all different with different uh, purposes. They have different driving techniques, uh, and they're all um, very educated unique in its own, in its own, own unique way, in its own way. So uh, that's a drag car, for example. That's uh, specifically for the drag circuit. Uh, it's a different thrill. Uh, this is a different kind of uh, drift car because it's, it looks very similar to that. But this is a V8. That's a straight six. This is naturally aspirated, that's turbocharged. When you drift in a turbocharged car, that the whole technique of drifting is very different from a, a naturally aspirated V8 because the power comes in very differently. So there are a lot of little, little things. These are four-wheel drift cars which are completely different. I, mean, I, I can obviously tell you have a lot of love for cars. So, you know, if it weren't for the Raymond Group and that whole business that you had to take care of, would you pursue racing as a full-time profession? As an I, would have, I would have at one Definitely. time. At one time, I would have probably, but you know, I know my responsibilities. I had to be here to run this group, and uh, yes. I still enjoy my racing. I raced professionally last year, or what mm. semi-professionally, whatever one does. But the Ferrari challenge. The Ferrari your... challenge, and uh, we can talk about that later. But so I, I am trying to find the balance, and mm. uh, I think it's a good balance because you're, you're, you're racing when you want to, and you're, you're still working. Uh, but what takes priority, I mean, you know, between juggling between your family life, your other obligations, business, of course, which takes up a lot of time, and finding time for your hobbies? You've got to find the balance. It's how you find the balance. And it's just uh, proper planning gives you the balance. So, So, but what is uh, your regular weekend like? I mean, is it planned at all? Or do you, There's do you no know regular weekend. We're doing so many different things. Uh, I could be at my farm. I could be racing. I could be doing some motorsport event. I don't know. 
It all depends. Uh, it's, it's just planning. If you plan yourself, and I plan for one year ahead. I, I am told you're a very meticulous planner. In fact, if I name a date, you'll know what you're doing pretty on that particular. Pretty, is it pretty, is it true? Pretty much because we plan ourselves. Uh, we plan our business. We plan our fun. We plan us plan everything. But you you remember each day what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, pretty, in the pretty much in my calendar in my head. So I, I pretty much know six months ahead what I'm doing in my head. Do you know what you're doing on the 25th of December, for instance? 25th of December, I'm in Kana. What are you doing on the 7th of January? 7th of January is a weekend, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Saturday. So I am in Alibag with my school friends. You know, back to racing again. Uh, tell us about some incidents you would have had. You know, it's a dangerous sport, of course. Um, have you had some close shaves? Any stories you'd like to share well, with Every you? racing driver has a few accidents. Yeah. Uh, in the challenge last year, I had a big accident. Uh, it was not my fault. There were two cars involved in a brawl. Yeah. And I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Got taken out at 180 kilometers an hour. Mm. How to get knocked out at 180 k's now is a bit scary, but you know you you live. And you yet you continue doing yeah. this. Well, wow. it's fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, tell us more about your early life. You know, uh, of course, you had a very illustrious father, this huge business to take care of. Uh, when you started out, was there a lot of pressure to perform to live up to that standard? How did it? Start? Well, obviously, when you come from a business family, there's always always the eyes on the next generation. Key. Is this kid going to succeed? Is as he well just son of did. another rich kid? Uh, you know, rich father, stuff like that. But mm. you you develop into it. You you know your responsibilities. Uh, and obviously, much later in my life, I found balance in my my social life, my work life. My so I actually am in a good space with the way I balance myself. So I get a lot of stuff done. I see. Um, you know, even early on, I believe you went to cathedral, you went to a couple of other schools in Bombay, you were in college and you already started working by the time you were in college. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, do you think, uh, you know, doing, not doing an MBA like just, every, just about everybody does, is that something you regret or do you think it has worked out perfectly fine without? It's fine. I think I'm doing okay. I'm a, no, I'm you're doing very artist, well. So but, but you know, you know since kids today uh, think of MBA as the obvious route to take uh, to begin their career in businesses, of course. So, you know, I mean, if I'd done an MBA, it would have been a good thing. But I, I think I, what I lost out in doing an MBA, mm. I gained in getting into work much earlier than most of the other kids would. At what age did you start? So on? I was in, in business at the age of maybe 17, 18. I used to come here to this, this complex and train 16, 17, 18. And I was the CEO of a business at the age of 22. I ran a newspaper at the age of 22. So and it's been 16 years since you've been the chairman of... Yes. And, and the Madding. 17 now, I think. 16, 17, something like that. But, so I started off as the CEO of a newspaper. Then I started off the launch of Kama Sutra, which was in 1990. Mm. I think I lost out on doing a formal MBA, but I, I sort of gained hands-on valuable experience. And mm. that's sort of helped me good. And, you know, doing business in India, a lot of it is what MBAs can't teach you. Mm, you know, it's course. different environment, different management skill set. I remember reading somewhere your daughter already comes to the business. Yes, <laughs> uh, my elder daughter started coming when she was five. My God, wow, well, it my runs in the family. Do, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, my elder daughter designed a collection for Park Avenue this year, which has gone to the stores. Uh, which That's her input and she's, she's a sharp young girl. We'll continue our conversation with Gautam Singhani of Raymond Group on the other side. Stay tuned. CNBC TV 18 Weekender.